What's going on everybody? My name is Dan and welcome back to another analysis video. Today we're going to be examining the recent up and comer Sway. This young man at the age of 16 is utterly crazy at the game. Being a recent addition to the FaZe Clan roster, he can drop 20 bombs and set kill records like it's nothing. Some are even calling him the best controller player in creative mode. He also recently bested Mongrel in a series of 1v1s, all while playing on a controller. This is just super impressive stuff, and while his title of best controller player is up for debate, he's definitely a strong running contender. Are you a controller player too? Check out our online courses on playing Fortnite with a controller to up your game and become the next big controller player in the Fortnite scene. So let's check out what Sway exactly does in game that makes him such a great player. We'll be looking at a few examples of his duel against Mongrel, and then we're going to look at the recent kill record games set by Sway and Tifu. While analyzing his play, we're going to discuss what sets Sway apart from other players, what makes him so good at build fights, and how he's able to achieve so many high kill games. This 1v1 series between Sway and Mongrel was something fans really wanted to see. The score ended 10 to 8 in favor of Sway, with many of the fights having to be reset due to them reaching the height limit. For playing on a controller, Sway's building and editing abilities are top notch. You think he's playing on a mouse and keyboard with how quick and smooth his building is. Normally, controller building does not look this good. One thing to bring up about Sway 1v1ing is his awareness. He's always just so conscious of where his opponent is during the build battle. Take a look at this point here. Mongrel takes height on Sway, so Sway goes into high ground retake mode. In order to retake high ground successfully, you need to be able to block any potential incoming shots. That's why Sway keeps turning around and putting up build. He knows that a shot from Mongrel is coming, but with fast enough building and a good awareness of your enemy's position, it's possible to block the shots and continue retaking high ground. Sway's high ground retaking abilities here are what keeps him alive when the fight isn't in his favor. Another thing Sway does extremely well, which nets him several points against Mongrel, is preemptive building. The idea is to put down your own pieces in a spot your opponent would want to place their own before they can do it themselves. That way, you can essentially block their movement or ability to build out in a lot of situations. Also, you control the editing of those pieces, so you have more openings to find that kill. Sway mostly does this with floors and cones once he reaches height, but you sometimes see him doing it with ramps as well. It's pretty much the technique in a lot of these fights that ultimately enables him to get the kill. A third and more simple technique we're seeing Sway go for a lot is what we're going to call the side angle peak. When your opponent is high ground retaking, you change your angle by repositioning more to the left or right side. The idea is that your opponent will be building to block shots in the direction they think you're in. If you quickly change that direction, they won't expect it. And if they don't expect it, they aren't as likely to build some cover to block your shot. There's definitely plenty more here that shows how advanced Sway is with this game's mechanics. His high ground retakes, editing, aim, enemy awareness, his 90s, you name it. You can definitely tell Sway lives and breathes creative mode. The amount of practice needed to pull this stuff off as consistently as he does is just crazy. When it comes to controller players, Sway might have some of the best mechanics out there. Let us know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments. No! Oh. No, GG boys. Oh. About a week or two ago, Sway and Tifu duoed some arena together and hit a kill record, 42 eliminations, the highest achieved for a Champions Division duos game. It being the highest division for arena means their opponents are no slouches either. They need to win each fight really decisively in order to keep the momentum going. So let's see what exactly Sway does in particular to enable that. The first thing we noticed right off the bat was how Sway takes his time with each shot. He'll wait to make sure his shot can connect before firing it, especially with slow fire rate weapons like the Pump Shotty or Flint Knock Pistol. Being patient with your shots is something a lot of players simply don't do enough, especially with shotguns. Too many players fire their weapon when it's not optimal and miss out on a ton of potential damage. It's the early game here. Multiple times throughout, Sway remains patient when aiming his weapons to ensure he lands a big shot before his opponents can respond with building cover. Now, let's talk about how they rotate. Usually after each fight, Sway and Tifu try to rotate out as fast as possible. In this situation, they're looking for any players to fight, really. Ideally, however, they're looking for a third-party situation they can clear up. A big part of rotating this way involves the Quad Crasher. It can rotate them to pretty much anywhere on the map while searching for opponents to fight from the sky. But Sway also isn't afraid of using and carrying mobility items like shockwave grenades or shadow bombs. Even if it's just to get into the next fight faster, it's worth carrying for them. Throughout this match, Sway and Tifu always plan to use some sort of mobility, whether it's vehicles, items, or just whatever's available to them. Obviously, it's not just mobility that's getting them all these kills. Once they find some players, they need to still kill them relatively quickly so they can move on. This is where all of Sway's training and creative pays off. He's just so used to build battles, it's almost like he's thinking five steps ahead of his opponent. 
In this fight here, just like we saw in his fight versus Mongrel, Sway is placing builds to block his opponent. Then he finishes the fight by going for the jump shot, similar to how he looked for open angles versus Mongrel. In order to get kills quickly, you usually need to play very aggressively, and sometimes that aggression can end up backfiring. Take a look here. These two players are focused on Tifu, so Sway gets a free push into their box from behind with his heavy sniper. The safer play would be to get the wall replaced instead of forcing yourself into the same box as two opponents, but they're going for a kill record. Plays need to be made. He hits one player in the head for 120 damage, but unfortunately doesn't finish him off. With a trap on the wall and nowhere to maneuver, FaZe eventually gets knocked. It's a good thing that Tifu's got his back and can easily clean up the fight. And a bit more luck here. Tifu gets the quick revive so they can keep moving. If Sway didn't swap targets after his first shot, there's a good chance he would have knocked the one player and then been able to focus the second down as well. This is how aggression can backfire. A safer and slower play might have allowed them to finish the fight earlier than how it actually ended, but in the end, it worked out without too much downtime. Later on, toward the end of the game, Sway pulls off some absolutely insane plays. So, Tifu and Sway rotate to densely populated Mega Mall. There are something like four teams here as they come in. With so many players packed into such a small area, Sway changes his playstyle so that he's more protected from third parties. He does this by forcing himself as much as he can into enemy players' builds. For instance, pushing into this guy's house prevents Sway from getting shot from behind. Sway is committing to a kill, protecting himself from third party, and reacting defensively to a trap, all within the span of like two seconds. It's just so impressive how he's able to do it. The same type of aggressive box fighting play happens right after too. Sway lasers a soccer skin fighting another team. He doesn't get the kill, and the guy falls behind cover, so Sway closes the gap in order to get a more effective kill range. He uses the heavy sniper to, again, bust into his opponent's base unexpectedly. After dealing even more damage to another soccer sweaty, he repositions and goes for a quick wall replace. Missing the first wall replacing attempt means that his opponent might go for a quick edit trap play. To avoid that, Sway acts smartly by placing his own pieces around him in order to prevent his opponent from being able to place a trap. It might have made no difference in this case, but it really does help illustrate the high level of thinking that goes on in Sway's mind. He eventually pushes his way into their box and is able to finish both players off with nothing more than some good aim and movement. We're getting toward the ending of this game, and at this point, some heavy mistakes start to be made. Sway gets a quick couple of kills and then notices another team hiding in the house below them. Maybe he's just eager to finish the game here, but Sway takes a couple of uncharacteristic peeks toward this one player holding a better angle. He loses the trade quite hard, and at the same time, he finds out that Tifu got eliminated. Now, it's all up to Sway to clutch out the game. This duo here does a decent job of pressuring Sway since he's low on health, but remember how Sway's carrying mobility items? They would have likely been able to finish him here, especially with the storm adding some pressure, but those shadow bombs in his inventory? They're lifesavers. With them, he's able to reposition to the safe zone and heal up. At this point, it's interesting to see how Sway utilizes his shadow bombs. Not only is he using them to rotate, but he's also trying to land on players as it expires. With the unexpectedness that comes with an aggressive shadow bomb play, Sway is able to net himself a couple of elims. Again, it can be pretty risky to constantly be in everyone's face like this. However, Sway makes it look easy. With what seems like no effort, he gets the kill and is able to move on without any repercussions. He's able to do it again on this rotate here. By utilizing the wall jump ability of the shadow bomb on all these trees, Sway is able to find another unsuspecting player to uncloak next to. After getting the Elim with some aggressive rifle shots, he quickly focuses his attention on the teammate rushing over. Again, being able to control structures is super important. Had this next opponent placed a ramp or some walls, he likely wouldn't have gotten trap killed. But of course, Sway sees the easy trap kill and takes this man's life. We'll see you right. The shadow, uh, yeah. Chilling. Might be able to take height, it looks like everyone's rotating. You can land on this, that guy right there. Take height. Nice. You definitely like, height's probably free. Easy trap kill, nice. The match ends simply with Sway using his heavy sniper to push into a box one more time. With 24 limbs by Sway and 18 by Tifu, they managed to set the Division 7 Arena kill record. If you guys aren't following Sway right now, you definitely should. As you can probably tell from what you just saw, his level of play is just ridiculous. He possesses an amazing balance of game mechanics, intellect, and the aggression needed to drop high kill games. While his track record in competition so far hasn't been the best, we're certain that with a little bit more grinding and practice in a team setting, Sway's going to start consistently placing high up in future tournaments. In one of the more recent competitions, the Trio's Cash Cup, he got 9th place playing with Klix and Tifu. With a result like that, we've got no doubt that he'll be able to hold his own again in the future. Sway's exploding with potential, and we can't wait to see where this guy ends up. 
All right, guys, that's all we got for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we have a lot more videos just like this one coming up, so make sure that you subscribe. Share this with your friends if you think they'll get something out of it. My name is Daniel Ammerman. You can follow me on Twitter right here. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.